Hey everybody, so I'm back again with another What Sold video. This one is from last week again, so May 14th through the 20th, I believe the dates are what I was looking at, and it was pretty much another average week, which is great, which is fine. I've decided to adopt a more positive mindset, <laughs> um, considering the time of year that it is, and the amount of work and time I can put into listing and the fact that my husband is not listing. So over the winter, we kind of get used to a certain amount of new listings that are able to get up, but he's been doing a lot of um, his carpentry work in this better weather. So, which is fine because that's, I've said it before, that's um, our main income at the moment. And then in the winter, we work on reselling a little bit more. So um, anyway, it always works out good. And so we have actually more sales on eBay than Poshmark this time. And I kind of decided, like I said, by way of, you know, being positive, I played around with a bunch of things last week on eBay. I turned off international sales cause I heard those, you know, were making things glitch. And then I, I tried out different promotions and different things like that. And nothing really seemed to be fixing anything. Things, sales pretty much stayed the same no matter what I was doing. So I just went and put everything back the way it was. I did start a coupon today, which I have, as you know, I've run the coupons here and there. And those actually do perform pretty well for me. So I'm going to try that. I haven't done the coupon in a little while. So um, the coupon is kind of a normal strategy for us as well as sending out offers to the people who are watching. So I've had some sales and then we had some sales on Ruby Lean as well as Etsy. And so we'll share those as well. So like I said, it was like the 14th through the 20th and we will go ahead and start with this fishing hat. And let me pull up my eBay sales on here on my phone. Cause I can see the actual prices show better on my phone than they do on the computer and sometimes there's offers and, and deals and things like that. So this one actually sold for $16.99. So full, I think that was, I think that was our full asking price. And, um, PFG is like performance fishing gear. It's a line of Columbia, you know, maybe you're more fam you're familiar with the shirts and everything like that. But I just kind of thought, Someone would want this hat. The lettering was raised, like a raised fake metal, kind of like fishing hooks. And so $16.99 probably paid, I'm pretty sure it was a Goodwill hat, so that would have been like two bucks. Next up, now these were kind of interesting. Um, I came across in a little thrift store, or one of our smaller-ish thrift stores, I came across these wallets and they were about $3 a piece. And the brand is, you can see here, it's A-L-L-E-T-T, -T, all it, all it. And their advertising is that they're the slimmest wallet in the world. Okay, so if you look at the back, like it talks about, my little picture's not going to show up. So it can hold up to 24 cards, cash and receipts. It's compact, lightweight. So this one is just made of a nylon, like a ripstop fabric. And as you can see, the original price at the store was 30 something. So I came across a few, a few of these. Some I think were in like the wrong boxes, but I tried to kind of match them up. And I sold some of them very, very quickly. So, you know, I picked up maybe five the first time. I think I went back to the thrift store. I found another one that wasn't in the box and I just grabbed that one. So this sold for $29.99 and then almost immediately the buyer bought this one as well. So she bought a red one and a purple one. They were identical. They were both $30. Um, we combined shipping into one package and I got positive feedback on these. So they were, um, they were good. That was totally worth it. I love it when things sell quickly. So you can see, here's the tag on the inside of the wallet. If you happen to see these loose, um, it's just, it's a, a made in the USA. So not vintage, but these 
uh, designs of these wallets. Like I couldn't find this one on their website right now, but, um, they, you know, people still know about them or they at least are, were searching on eBay for like a minimalist or a slim wallet. People like to take them hiking or backpacking or, or things like that. And then the men's wallet, some of them, I have another couple listed and the men's have RFID feature where they block, you know, anybody doing whatever, messing up your credit card or however that works. Okay. So moving on this Wrangler shirt, really, I didn't, I had picked it up a while back. I think it was in the profit pile that I pulled out recently where I was pulling out anything spring and summer that I really needed to get listed. And you know, I didn't think anything was very much special about this shirt at all, but I mean, it really wasn't. It sold for $15. <laughs> I just took an offer. I think I sent an offer. They countered with 15 and I was like, yeah, fine. It's short sleeve. Um, it's a size medium, but it sold quickly. So I have so many Western shirts I have a few pairs of cowboy boots and I really need to get working on those because it's very trendy right now. Um, there's a coastal cowgirl look going on right now. And then just Western shirts, you know, I've, have been kind of hit or miss with me, but I have a bunch of vintage handmade ones and I have some vintage Wrangler ones and I usually try to just look for the colorful ones. And, um, but anyway, they're just bread and butter. They're just going to be bread and butter, but they, I just need to get them listed and get them moving because it's a good season to get those types of shirts listed. So like I said, it only sold for 15. I picked up this pair of shorts. They're foot joy. I, you know, I was kind of avoiding foot joy. Some things are good and some things are not so great. Um, but when I saw these shorts, I thought, you know what? They're in really good condition. They didn't have any staining or anything like that. And I know there's places, country clubs or golf clubs or whatever, that sometimes require white shorts or maybe certain events. And so I'm like, you know what? Someone might want these or they just, a guy likes white shorts because it makes his legs look tanner. I don't know. It doesn't work on me. <laughs> um, but so anyway, these foot joys sold for $25. And I was glad they sold before I could end up getting them dirty. <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry again about the light behind me. I have, we have the blind in our possession now. So my husband just, he needs to build a frame around the window to, for attaching the blind to it. It's not quite a finished window at the moment. And, um, I don't really have another place in this room, in my eBay room where it's quiet down here where I can film without a ma massive rearrange. And so I, part of the work that needs to be done down here besides that window and putting up that blind is that, um, I need more shelving and all these cabinets and things. The shelving is really far apart and he's, he's been meaning to add since we moved in here to add more shelving and I can fit more stuff and then I can move stuff around a bit better. But in the meantime, I've got a big mess in here right now. So life of a reseller. Moving on. This was an interesting hat. We picked it up a few weeks ago. We went out of town thrifting and um, my husband just happened to see this hat and it's got a super long bill. You can see that. So you never know. Things that are unusual sell. And so that hat ended up selling for full asking price of $24.99. The brand was Tory, T-O-R-R-E-Y. This scrub I have had forever and I was so glad to get whatever offer, $13. I was like, whatever, just take it. It's new with tags. I know it's a size small, but it was Grey's Anatomy, which for a while there in the day, that was like the a really good scrubs brand to buy. And, but whatever, gray and small, I guess was not popular. And so it'd been listed, like I said, way too long. And so $13 moved it on. 
This is another husband item. I don't know if it's something that he picked up thrifting or if he picked it up for himself to use or whatever, but th these actually sold for an offer for $12. That's Makita. They're recip saw blades and um, yeah, like I said, I don't know the story behind that. Starbucks. This used to be one of our favorite travel mugs to find and sell. It's the Starbucks Barista. It's from 2004. So I think it was the coffee, the, the Starbucks coffee brewer, um, the Aroma Solo. Like you could, it was a coffee maker and then this, you know, you would just put the travel tumbler in it. I don't know if it was instead of the coffee pot or if there was a model where there was a coffee pot and, and this could go in it. Anyway, it was a thing. It's kind of Y2K-ish, right? So in our many years of selling Starbucks, we used to find these fairly often and it was super popular. So it was kind of a nostalgia thing when I found this at a thrift store. I also found this on our trip um, a couple weeks ago. So that was awesome. And it sold for $25. So I would still pick them up. And I sold another necktie. So I'm kind of gathering some more information. I will do a necktie video eventually. Um, but I do like to, it's been a while since I've sold quite a few. So before I do a video, I want to try to list some of my backlog and see kind of where the trends are going and how things are selling before I start giving out any kind of advice. Okay, if that makes sense. Now this one sold for $30, but it sold the same day. So I was like, of course, you know, the first thing you think, oh, I priced it too low. But I don't think I did. I think I priced it just right because it wasn't silk. You know, it was just that like silky polyester. Um, Wembley is a good name for vintage ties. But it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have the characteristics of like a 30s or a 40s tie, which can be bigger money. So I'm thinking it was still, it was just like the 50s. It was a little bit wider before the 50s turned into the big, you know, to more skinny ties. Anyway, that's kind of my guess. Somewhere like whatever. So what it had going for it was the cool pattern on the front. It was in really good condition too. It reminded me of an artist palette and brush, very stylized, which means it's not literal. It's very, you know, kind of an abstract version of that. Good colors. And yeah, it sold same day for $30, which is good. And I actually picked this one up not that long ago. I have a big pile a bin of ties to list, but this was actually a recent, I think, Goodwill find. So 30 bucks. Two bucks into 30 bucks. Hey dude is a good, so I hear from all the shoe people, they're always excited when they find Hey Dude shoes. They're very lightweight. They're very um, kind of like your barefoot, but not. And I was excited to find these. We cleaned them up a little bit. I think we just threw them in the wash or something. And, but they took a while to sell. So um, I don't know, maybe our price was too high or whatever, but these did sell for full asking price of $50. I'll try to block the window. Um, but anyway, hey dude, I would still keep an eye out for those in good shape. Here was another one of the wallets that sold this week. It was, it, this one's called a sport wallet, so it's not the full size, it's even smaller. And honestly, you know, this was women's. It doesn't have to be women's. It's, you know, it, it could have been a men's wallet just as easily. And um, it sold for $21. I think I sent an offer and then somebody sent me a, a counter offer. But that sold for $21, which was okay by me. Again, pretty quickly. And then the last one was another quick sale. I picked this up... Uh, one day last week, and then within a couple days, it was sold. I just couldn't believe how much attention it got right away. So it's free people, which for me has been hit or miss, but a lot of people love to find it. I just, I had picked it up because I like, I like the style. I knew it would be 
popular. It's kind of like, it's like a knitted, it's like a sweater dress, but very cottage core kind of looking as well. It kind of reminds me of something a Taylor Swift fan would wear. Swifties, they call them. But baby doll, I don't know. That's all kind of the keywords I threw at it. So 20 bucks for that. And that sold within a couple days. Over to Posh. So we have an area hat and these have just become bread and butter for me. So like I said, I live in Montana area is not super hard to find. Um, I don't find the jeans terribly off often. I do find men's shirts. I just picked up like two of them recently and I discovered as we were listing hats that even though area and Western like boot company baseball caps, even though they're fairly common, they actually sell pretty well and they sell pretty quickly. So I just figure, you know what, bread and butter, I'll just keep picking them up when I find them. So this sold again within a couple days, uh, just for $15. So not a huge profit, but it moved quickly. So that was nice. Next was another pair of shorts, Tommy Bahama, um, just sold for $20. They're a size 42 with a 10 inch inseam. And, um, we listed a bunch of shorts back in like February or March. And we were like, we're going to get on top of these things. We're going to have all these things ready. And the sales of my shorts have just been kind of trickling out. So maybe there's still more summer to come and there'll be more, more sales. Um, coming on these shorts, but we'll see. Maybe I haven't priced too high. I don't know. I think that's kind of part of my new, new strategy is to just remember to just make, to remember to accept less of a profit margin. Like, does that make sense? Like not, you know, I think in the past, when the economy was a little bit better or in the past couple of golden years of reselling, you know, you could really hold out for the prices that you want. And now I think I need to just accept maybe a little bit, you know, not on everything, not on the major good things that you find, but on certain bread and butter, a pair of khaki shorts, Tommy Bahama, like don't hold out for that last $5, right? Just move things through. And I don't really want my summer stuff to hold over till next year. I don't mind holding over jackets and things like that and giving it another shot. But shorts and all that kind of thing, I want them to move within this season. So that would be great. That's my new thoughts for the day. <laughs> uh, bonobos, again, another one I was like, I don't even know why I picked this up. The name is not bad. Like certain bonobos things, the pants and things like that can sell pretty well some shirts. This was just a polo shirt. It wasn't a big deal, but it was an extra large. And I just went ahead and took a $15 offer on this one. Now, Filson is one of those brands that I love to find. And, um, this was just a fishing shirt. It got, I got a good price, $48 dollars. You know, comps weren't super high on Filson fishing shirts. But, um, and it didn't get a ton of attention right away, but I sold it on Poshmark finally for $48. So I'm happy with, very happy with that. Here's another brand. I have no idea how to pronounce this. KJUS, Cuser, Cuser, something like that. And if you know, go ahead and let me know down below. Um, but I hear about it from other resellers and they're happy to find it. And I'm like, you know what? We've had this polo listed <laughs> for a while. It was an extra large, so I didn't think it would be that difficult. Um, but you know, again, it was like $15. I'll take it, whatever. I just wanted it to be gone. So I would probably have to dig a little bit deeper into that brand and see what are the pieces that actually do better. I thought they were a golf brand. And so that polos are mostly what you're going to find, but I'm not positive. Okay. And then also on Posh, REI, you know, again, I knew this was not going to be a high dollar item when I grabbed it. Um, but it was a nice looking shirt. It was very good 
um, good quality. And it was just by REI, just kind of a hiking, vented hiking type shirt. And it sold for $20. And then I got these napkins. It's so funny. I don't, I don't, when I find things like this, I don't always think of Poshmark is where I'd end up selling them. And it's not even the greatest picture, <laughs> whatever. So I had found like four or six of these napkins at some point. No, maybe four. And I, um, was like, Ooh, Waterford, which Waterford crystal is really expensive. And so I had picked up these napkins, these damask, 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 I don't know. You know, this is, I'm going on a side tangent. Just be prepared. You can skip ahead. Reselling can be a lonely business. So it's only in the last few years of, um, YouTube where sometimes I'm starting to hear certain words pronounced out loud, <laughs> right? So, you know, that's just, that's a minor example, but brands especially like you might have a brand you say it a certain way in your head right and in the past you only could read about it in in facebook groups or you can read about it in articles on the internet or blogs or things and then it comes to the point you're making a youtube video and you're like wow i have to say that word out loud and you don't know exactly how you know to say it so i just think it's interesting that you know youtube has kind of changed things in that respect. Anywho, so these turned out to be, they were from 2004. They weren't as old as I thought they were. And so I threw them on eBay. Like I said, I had only found like four the first time. And I found out that that really wasn't enough. Like people didn't care about getting that few of them. So I think I had made a listing, maybe, I don't know where I put it, or I just never finished the listing. And then I was at Goodwill like a couple weeks later and there were more. And so I said, oh, sweet. So I went ahead and bought the rest and I made up a set of 12, which I figured would help. And then I just, you know, took the offer for $28, another thing to just move through. So let's look at Ruby Lane real quick. And I apologize in advance to not scare you with this first one. Yikes. Yikes. That is a really big picture. So this is one of my first listings I did on Ruby Lane back in 2021. And um, I'm glad it sold. It was It's a coffee mug. It is the TV character Howdy Doody. Here we can look at this picture. You can see that it's a coffee mug. The brand is Vandor that made, made it. Made in Japan. So anyway... Um, a nice, interesting figural <laughs> coffee mug, right? So we could kind of throw that in with our coffee mug videos about, you know, just look for the unusual, right? And sometimes it'll sell. It took a while, but finally it sold for $25. And then same day I sold this pair of earrings by Park Lane, you know, very nautical ship's wheel. They're on their original card and everything like that. I had picked up a bunch of Park Lane jewelry at a local thrift store one day. And um, Park Lane's kind of tough. It's some of it, some of the stuff can sell like that. And then other stuff just kind of sits. So $16 for those. And then this is a bracelet that if you saw the jewelry haul, I had it in that first jewelry haul video. And, um, the brand was called Sweet Romance. It was very much a nineties type of brand, I believe. And, you know, it was just full of rhinestones. And anyway, so it actually sold really quickly. It's one of those things. I always say that on Ruby Lane, you know, certain things will sell very quickly because, um, it shows up when you list it and it's all ready to go, it shows up on the, um, like newly listed page. And there are buyers who, who look at that page every day to see the newest things on the whole site. And so I think that's what happened. This hit that page and somebody purchased it for $22. Okay. One pattern 
for last week. This was just a little kid's pattern. I don't sell a lot of children's patterns. They're generally, see this one was $8. You know, they're generally not worth the time for me. When I get a bunch of them, I usually just end up lotting them up to sell them that way. Um, so this one's been listed for a while and it sold for eight. Then in the flatware shop, we sold these dinner knives. They're just stainless Japan. The company was called Don, D-O-N. And um, they're just kind of like little serrated dinner steak knives kind of thing. Not super sharp. So $24, but very mid-century looking and would fit in, you know, with that mid-century look. And then in my husband's shop was he sold this foot pedal from like a sewing machine, you know, and so it just, it is what it is. So he just sold it as kind of like something to repurpose or display or whatever. And, um, yeah, so that sold for $25. And then our last sale of the week, I left for last. It was our best sale of the week. And this was something I found at Goodwill. And um, the artist is, okay, here we go with another name. I would, I always thought like Nagel or Nagel in my head. You can let me know if how that's pronounced. Sometimes I go to Google and say, how do you pronounce this before I make my video? But sometimes I don't. <laughs> um, anyway, very, very like 80s artist, very famous. You know, it, it makes people think of artwork that's in beauty salons or, you know, I heard that or just kind of reminds you of that back in the day kind of, you know, very graphic look. So it just kind of screams 80s to me. So I found this poster at Goodwill and we were like, you know what, we're going to go ahead and list it and ship it rolled up. So this actually went overseas and we shipped it in a, in a tube. So hopefully it gets there. Okay. And the buyer paid $145 just for the poster itself. And then they paid for uh, shipping on top of that. So keep an eye out for that name. It is definitely, um, the posters have a good sell through rate and I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> um, it rained, so the smoke is gone. So that's nice, but it's still allergy season. Okay. So that was it for the week that had some fun ones. Uh, the poster was probably my favorite and, um, as usual, go ahead, leave me a comment down below. What was your favorite item that you sold this week? What was your best sale? Um, and any questions you might have. So I will be out of town for like half this week. And, um, I, I don't know how good my, what sold will be next week <laughs> because of that, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave things open and just maybe have a little bit of a longer handling time. I'm only going to be gone, you know, really only most of it's weekend. So I don't have to ship on the weekend anyway. So, um, I, and then maybe if I get a chance, I will get some listings on eBay put into drafts and then just launch them, you know, in the evenings while I'm away. So we'll see if I am organized enough to get that done ahead of time. But there will be at least one video that comes out while I'm gone as well. So look forward to that. And I will talk to you guys later.